Okay, g'day guys, version 1.3.2, roof framing and structure inside of SketchUp. Let's see how we go. I oh, won't mess around here too much, guys. I'm going to draw some walls, and anyone who's familiar with Plusbeck would understand probably how to do this, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown anyway, because the roof is an integral part, and it actually connects with the walls. Uh, let's go out here, so. Uh, looking for my green axes. A lot of people have troubles with this last move that I'm just about to do here. If I push shift here, it will line up with my original uh, line. Okay, so now I have a brick veneer dwelling. Uh, I could choose several different construction types, but that's in another tutorial. Okay, look, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there's plenty of things here that you haven't haven't seen, and I'm going to quickly blast through this, guys, and just show you some cool things that Plusbeck does do that you may not be aware of. If I go over here and I put a small window in, I can type in the size. You notice it actually put in a lintel that holds up the brickwork, but if I go a little bit larger, so we go to, say, here, it put a larger lintel in there, so there's a bit of an angle in there. If I go larger... It'll put a large lintel in according to a manufacturer's spec. Now, obviously, you still want to get this all checked out because we don't know what weight you're putting on top of this. But to hold up brickwork, it has pretty much self-supports. Uh, so the lintel holds it up until the mortar goes dry and holds the bricks in the center. Okay, I'm here to talk to you about roofs. Now, right-click, walls, generate roof from walls. Okay, now, the information that's in this dialog over here is important. Okay, so we've got our fascia height, we've got our eave overhang. Now, the eave overhang is, is generally considered to be from the frame. So you'll notice in the dotted lines over here, it's actually from the frame. Uh, so a 450 overhang from outside a brick would usually be 600, and if you're imperial, it'll be the same thing. It, it's usually with this type of construction, the internal wall is load-bearing. Okay, so I can quickly go in here, and I can change these to suit the intention. Okay, so rafter thickness is important, and I'm going to explain this a little bit further when I go and put some structure in. I'm going to go in here and go submit. Okay, so I created a roof. All right. I've also got the capacity to create a whole heap of elevations here. So if I simply select all of my scenes, you'll notice that I now have elevations, uh, which is great for layout, set up, ready to go. But I also have all. Uh, which is everything inside of the building. So you'll notice if I look underneath there without a slab, you'll notice there's studs and so on. And if I went to structure, I have the structure that's going to hold up the roof. Okay, I'm going to go back to all, and I'm going to drill inside of my roof, okay, because there are several different things. Like, I mean, you might be just doing an extension or something like that. So what I did is I actually used select my space bar. I'll go out and I'll do it again. Okay, so up here's the select arrow. But I could also use my space bar. I clicked on it once. I double click, double click again, and double click again. You'll notice I just got one face. So if I just wanted to put structural timbers in here because it's an extension or something like that, sure, I can just do one face. But I might want to do three faces. I push shift uh, and clicked on those faces. But I think for the point of the exercise, I'm going to do all faces. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up to my roof tool inside of Plusbec. And you'll notice there's a new icon here called Roof Framing Tool. I'm going to click on that icon. And what it's done is it's read the information that I put in to start. So uh, it knows that the eaves overhang is 600, the rafter height is 900, because we put it in earlier. But the thing is, when you're actually doing a structure inside of roof, a 90 mil rafter, or 4 inches, whatever you may be, if you're using American uh, Imperial, uh, may not be strong enough to do or might not be the most economical way. So for instance, we might need to go in and change and up the size of the rafters. So as you can see, I've got 140 chosen here. So obviously the rafter is bigger than the distance we've allowed for in the roof. So there's a thing called a bird's mouth. A carpenter would cut that in to a larger piece of timber so that the, the rafter doesn't hang down below the ceiling line. That's a little bit of technical talk, but it is important to understand uh, this kind of stuff. Now where the advantages come into this is that, that figuring out this kind of information, the amount of materials involved, the structure to hold it up is is excessive. So we've automated the process. We can change the size of our hips as well. I'm going to leave them at this. You'll see the hips will be green out of a H2. It's more for visual purposes. Usually you would make it all out of the same type of timber. H2 is just a term like treated timber. I'm going to go submit. Okay, depending on the size of the, your roof, it might take three or four seconds uh, to do it, and if it's a really, really large roof, it might take up to 15 to 20 seconds, so be patient. Okay, you'll notice I have everything on, and obviously the, the roof structure sits under the roof. So 
there's several ways I can do this. I can go up to my layers and we've automatically created a layer for our roofing. So I could turn that layer off uh, in here. So I can go roof and turn it off and you'll see that I can start to see my roofing. But we actually automated that so you don't have to go through your layers. You can actually go up here to structure. So now we're just looking at what holds up the house and if I had a concrete slab it would show in there as well. So I'm going to zoom in and you can see we've actually got a size of our timbers in there as well. Uh, we have plum cut uh, compound mitres and we have a bird's mouth because that rafter as you can see would have hung down lower than the wall uh, and it would have actually divided this space here so uh, we actually figured out how to work that out according to the overhangs. Now Plusbeg did a complex mathematical equation there and allowed the computer to do what would be considered the norm in this particular uh, application. It doesn't matter if I'm going off 45 degrees in my walls it will still do it for you. Okay. There's a couple of situations here where a rafter was going to um, intersect with a valley and it didn't put it in. So what we had to do is allow you to the freedom to be able to do that yourself. Okay, so inside of the wall tool, you'll notice that there is also other tools down here in alternatives that allow you not only to do extra rafters, as you can see I'm missing one there, but allow you to under purlins, uh, collar ties, scissor struts, uh, and also uh, struts to from internal walls. You haven't got any internal walls in there, I can either draw one in. I'm going to keep it quick for you guys, so it's a quick overview here. Now, I know that my rafter spacing was supposed to be 600, so there's several ways I could do it. I could go and use my tape measure tool, which is up here, and I can click on that and say, okay, I want to come off the edge of this rafter 600 millimeters. Okay, if you've already done it once, you might need to push control to do that. And I also need to know where my overhang is. Now I can see that there's my overhang there. Okay, so I can either do another thing. One thing about this tape measure tool too, guys, is that you can actually measure from point to point, which is, is okay. But in this particular application, I should push escape there. Um, I actually wanted to create a line so I can see where my two lines intersect. Now I can go to my rafter tool, go draw. And I can simply go up to where my line intersects my ridge. See it come up with a little red cross? And I can go down and I can actually put the intersection in there. Now I have a rafter in there which has allowed me to fill in my roof uh, and save me a lot of time. One thing that you want to know about this is it is doing a material export. Now I haven't done a takeoff in this job yet so it's asking me for a job address so I can just simply go in here and write in my job address. Uh, and I'm just going to use one because I'm going to get through this quickly. You should put in the right details here, guys, because it will always save. And you know, if you're going to spend the time to draw the model, you might as well put the right details in. Okay. Now, if I go and click this, I have several things. Now, it's opened up in another screen here. I'll bring it over. Okay. It's got framing, which is all the timber framing. So anything I was looking at on screen is now measured, and I can associate a price with it. That's for another tutorial. But I want to go to my roof framing, and you'll notice that we're starting to get things grouping together. So I've got 19 of these particular rafters, which that would be our common rafters. And then I've got also uh, 10 of these and 12. Now what these are is actually what we'd cut on site, but I want to explain to you where those measurements came from and how you, they would actually translate to site. Okay, this is a common rafter, okay? It basically means that it's replicated the same thing over and over again. But on site, we would actually be uh, singing out off the roof to uh, a apprentice or a tradesman on a drop zone and saying, okay, I want you to cut me one rafter at from long point to short point, okay? Here. That's how we do it on site. And we might also want to tell them the distance up from the bird's mouth. Usually on site they would have a pattern rafter and they would just cr quickly create one and then they would trace over this to do this. But the measurement that's crucial from this particular is long point to short point and that's what they would do. Now on a creeper rafter, a creeper rafter is the rafter that actually uh, goes into a hip. It's actually got a long point and two long points okay so this is long point of the plum cut but this is long point of the long point well that's how I explain it anyway especially when dealing with apprentices so it's a right hand side rafter long point of long point the measurement has been taken from the long point the reason being is that on site you can actually hook your tape onto the end of this okay and you can then go down to the other end of the rafter and put in the measurement that I just showed you from the takeoff you could then go and get your measurements here and you can mark your measurements on these rafters as well. So we can use the dimension tool which I've just quickly used as a shortcut. I set it up as a D. Uh, you can set up shortcuts to suit yourself. Okay. 
Now I can go, okay, well there's my vertical height, uh, my, my level height, but I can also go out while I get this in the right area and I can actually dimension the height and the width and the length of my rafter uh, very quickly. I just got it there a second. There we go. So we've got three meters and three. Okay, that's long point to short point. Okay, we can move that dimension around to wherever we want to do. I can also go and dimension up the distance from down here as well very quickly. Okay, get in the right spot. Okay, 672. All right, the distance down from the top of the bird's mouth is usually one third of the rafter, but it's up to you to figure those stuff out. Uh, your lumber supplier, or there's a whole heap of information on site about pitching roofs. We've automated what we thought was going to be the best way for you to change it around. You can change your bird's mouth depth. You can say, I don't want a bird's mouth at all, and so on. Another thing that we did for the guys on site, uh, I do come from construction, and therefore I understand the complexities involved in this, is when you go and cut your... These things here are called infill rafters, and these are creeper rafters. They're all the same length from a 90-degree edge. Therefore, instead of saying, I need you to cut one here and one this length over here, all of our creeper rafters are the same length, so it saves a lot of time when you're doing it. Some people work from the center and use the crowned end rafter and work out. The problem with that is in different spans, you will get different measurements. I'm sure the carpenters will understand it. If you don't, it doesn't matter. The timber quantity is still going to be correct. Everything that's spit out is an actual cut length, so you need to allow yourself waste. And I just, just go through my takeoff and figure out what type of waste I'm going to use there. Okay, I'm going to show you some other things without going and doing all of my infills. I think that the one demonstration that I did do was probably adequate. I'm going to, have to go and delete my guides here. And what I'm going to do is there is also another thing. So for instance, if we built this roof, it would actually fall down and push the walls out because there's nothing holding the weight together. So there's a thing called a uh, collar tie, which I guess you can remember via the collar on your shirt. And usually there's a distance. It's usually one third of the roof, okay? Now these collar ties, well, actually, oops, I went I went diagonal there. If you make a mistake like I just did, then I'm going to Control Z and I'm going to go back and do it again. Don't click Submit at this stage. Just click Draw, okay? Because we're still working inside the roof tool, okay? And what I want to try and do is line it up with the correct. And you'll notice it'll snap to the right point because it's drawing them level. Now there's my collar tie. Now usually a collar tie runs every second rafter, but it's up to you to check your own codes and so on. I'm actually going to say, okay, I'm going to move it. So I click move on my shortcut, which is M, and I'm going to go times two. And I can do the same the other way. Now I have a collar tie, and that is just part of the structure in a pitched roof, okay? There's also another thing called an underpillion. So for instance, these rafters here will only span a certain amount of distance before they sag under the weight of either the roofing material on top or under their own weight. So we call it, we, we got a thing called an underpillion. So you'll notice where I created my collar tie from, I'm also going to create an underpillion. Okay, so for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to make this quick, guys. I don't really want to get caught up in too much. It's, it's more an informal sort of a, uh, a thing. Now I could put a collar tie from there or I could put a collar tie uh, from, the, from the end of this and change the sizes according to spans. It depends. A lot of this needs to be worked out from your internal walls. All right. Okay, so I'll just put that one in there. I didn't put it in very well. I could have spent a bit more time with it, but I think the understanding is there. I should have went and put all my collar ties through and then lined it up. There's another thing too. So for instance, if this room didn't have an internal wall, we might use a thing called a scissor strut. Okay, so scissor strut. I've just gone over to my rafter tool and I've said, okay, well, I'm going to create a scissor strut. Now, I'm not spending a great deal of time here, and I suggest using a couple of different methods. Yet, yeah, this is just an example. Okay, so I'm going to put my scissor strut in here. Right, I can change the size of the timber in the scissor strut, so I can say, okay, you know, I want to actually make my scissor struts larger, uh, and go submit. I push submit. Don't push submit. That's a bad thing to do. I, I get stuck around that. And I'm open to... Uh, comment on this guys if you think that there's a better way to do it. I'm actually going to change the color here as well. By changing the color all I'm doing is to make it easier for you to understand what I'm doing. Uh, alternatives and I'm going to go here rafter from points okay and I'm going to go and create another scissor strut and I might go a little bit lower okay. These scissor struts can be attached to several locations I'm a little bit short there. I can extend it if I want to. I can simply click inside of it and go, okay, push pull, which is P, 
and drag it out a little bit further. It will still quantify those extra measurements. Okay, there would also be one going the other way traditionally, uh, and there we go. There's also a strut which would go to an internal wall. So I don't have any internal walls here, but I'll just give you a demonstration of how a strut may work. Okay, draw. Uh, I'm actually want to change the size of my strut because it would be unusual to make it out of that particular size. So I'm going to go down and go 90 by 70. Draw. Did I click draw or submit there? Okay, go back, do it again. Okay, 90 by 70. Getting used to not kicking, clicking the submit button is something we probably need to understand. Okay, and I can make my strut go from here, I don't know, down to the, the floor or over to this nog. Okay, and we can create sut, struts, scissor struts. Uh, we can create a whole lot of things. The difference between a strut and a rafter is that this is going to have a level cut on it. You can see their level cut. Uh, whereas a scissor strut would usually have a plumb cut or a, a probably a, a cut off a level. So uh, you, we might even cut it this way, but you can change these to suit yourself. Okay, the longest point is going to be your measurement. Guys, that's a, a really brief overview of, of pitch roofing, but you can see the amount of time that it would save. I've actually sat down and done this in 2D before, and you know you can take guesses, and essentially you order more material than you actually need, and it costs you money, and it also allows you to explain to, say, maybe a carpenter that may not have as much uh, experience as you, or even the layman who's never done this before, from these drawings, they can construct. I consider it to be virtual design and construction. I think it's gone way past BIM, and all of this information is there ready to go. Um, all right, guys, look, I hope that helps you out. By all means, please make some comments uh, if you would like things changed around, but I know that that in myself how much time it's going to save uh, you when doing this kind of stuff. Alright guys, thanks for your time. Cheers.